Okay, this is a fairly short video. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use Tinkercad.com and we're going to have a go at creating a name tag. So I've logged into Tinkercad and once we're into Tinkercad, I'm going to click on create new design and it will probably come up with a nice strange name for this. We'll just wait for that to load for a second. Yeah, it's called Neat Javan Usam. You can change that later. Okay, and to do this, what we're going to do is fairly simple. I'm going to use a box. I'm going to stretch this out. Okay. Let's make kind of a flattish shape that's going to be our name tag. I can hide this way if I want. Now, we can check on here what the dimensions are. I'm not too worried about those at the moment, to be honest, because we're going to have to, when we 3D print this, put into FlashForge's um, slicing software, and I can resize it to that point anyway. Right, when I've made one box, I can add a second box in. Okay, so I could just draw it again, or I could have copied and pasted the first. Or in this case, I'm going to just draw it again, so I'm going to pull this one out like this. Okay, move it onto the side. I'm using the right click on my mouse to move the side. Okay, now you'll see here at the moment, if I push this box into this one, they're going to just completely overlap. I can change the color to make it a bit more visible, so if I change it to something like green just for now to show you. Okay, so I pull this in here that you can have get this complete overlap. In fact, the new box is bigger than the original one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this this way. And because I want this to be a name tag, I actually want this to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to pull this in from the edges. So it's a bit smaller that way. Okay. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller that way. I want to eventually make a hole here um, for a piece of elastic or some sort of connection piece to go in there. So I want to be a bit different. Now, I want this to be recessed out of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a hole and I'm going to pull it up and you should see here there's a bit of a gap here because that's going to be the amount of plastic that's left in. If I make it too thin it won't be very strong and if I make it too tall it'll be quite shallow so you need to hit some sort of balance there. Okay I'm going to put it there. If you click on the middle button and hold on on a mouse you can reposition yourself on the screen but I'm going to use the right one to turn around and the left one to select the area. Now I'm going to click on this group tool here and what you'll see is it will take away, you'll group it, and then it will, because that's a hole, it will then take the area away, okay? Now, next thing I want to do is I want to make a hole for um, a band or a connector, and I'm just going to use a cylinder option for that. So we put the cylinder here, okay? Again, if I pull this onto the top, we can make this a little bit more of a reasonable size. I can pull that onto there. At the moment, that's not, again, very visible. So what I want to do is I want to make it a bit taller and then just push it down. Okay, and you should see that's now sticking all the way through. If I select the whole of this area now, I can join it, but that's not a hole yet, so that would just make a sticking out piece. So I'm going to click on that, make it into a hole, and then select the whole area again and join this again. And again, now, if you look, what you should see is we can see right the way through it. Okay, so when we print that, that will come as, um, as a hole that we can um, then put a string or whatever else we want through. Now, I'm going to put my name on. So there's a couple of things I could do here. I could add a scribble or I could add text. I want this to apply just to this layer. So I'm going to use the workplace. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to click on here because I want it to come in on this level. And you'll see now it's not slicing at the bottom. Slicing at the space where the bottom of our um, indented area is. I'm going to click on text, put it in here, drop this down. Again, I'm going to change the color to make it more visible. It doesn't really matter what color, because when we put it on the 3D printer, that's where it's going to be selected. I'm going to put James as my name. Okay, we're going to move this so it's fairly central on here. Maybe make it a bit bigger by pulling the corners. Use the scroll button if you want to get in closer. Now, if you put a few segments on this and then add the bevel, you get you can get this much more smooth and top now, maybe a bit less than that. Okay, but you go from the hard, sharp edges there to this slightly curvy edge that you get here. So it becomes a bit more stylized. Whether you like that or not is your own decision. Okay, I'm going to move that down so it's in a more pleasing place. 
Now, before I do anything else with this, I want to decorate it. So again, I can do the same thing. If I want to decorate on the top here, I can click on the work plane there. So I'll move the plane to there. And I can do things like put a mini pyramid on there, turn it on the right reverse button. I can shrink that in and pull that around. So that's sitting nicely there. You can even recess it in if you don't want it to be fully visible. So if I click on that and click on the diamond, I can push that in, okay? So I get a smaller version of it. Obviously, if you push the V, but make sure it doesn't come out the bottom, but it wasn't that big to start with. The stars, the rings all work the same way. But on basic shapes here, where it says basic shapes, we can add other bits. So we can add in the hangout space options, making a home. There's things from the Smithsonian on here. There's assembly circuits. But if I go for the uh, hangout space one here to start with, you'll see there's things like seats, not particularly useful for what we're doing at the moment here. If I go into something like characters, you get some quite interesting ones. So one of the things I could do here, and that's if I put my work plane back onto the bottom, I could put things that are outside of here. So for instance, I could give my tag some flippers. I'm trying to get them in roughly the same space. This grid helps quite a lot with this. I could give it a piece hand. Obviously you need to make sure it's connecting. And probably I want to rotate that as well because otherwise a large amount of this is going to be unsupported when we print it. So I'm going to turn around so I can see the this one. Move it to about 90. Sometimes it's quite hard to do that, but if you click on here, you can write, just type it in. Okay, and then I can move that down so there's very little gap. It, one of the nice things with the slicing software is if you get it right down, you can actually kind of cut the bottom bit off, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, I can do the same on this one. So I'm going to put a hand on here again. Okay, going to move that around so that's 90. You can see we've now got some hands and bits on here. If I go back onto the basic shapes, I can do things like add a cylinder here. So the cylinder could become the head. Just move it out like that one. Just push it there. So that's definitely connected. If I don't want it to be quite that tall, I could shrink it down a bit. If I go back onto the characters set here now, I can use things like the scuba mask or the spectacles to give it eyes. So I'm going to put the scuba mask on there. You'll see one of the problems at the moment is obviously the angle is not right. So what I want to do is kind of get it sideways so we can see that side angle. Move that around again so it's 90. Probably doesn't matter if this one isn't exact actually because it'll just look stylized. But I'm going to try and do it. And I'm going to move across so that sits within the shape there. And you can see I've not done that very well. So let's just move that again. You can actually use the arrow keys on the keyboard. So if you get it close, you can uh, kind of move around with those. Give it a bit smaller. Okay. And you can see what I've got now is kind of like a flat name tag that'll hang on a string. Most of this won't have a problem with being supported because most of this is off a flat uh, base. The only bit of this that will have an issue printing is um, the snout here or the snorkel section here. We can deal with that in a second. Okay. So once this is finished, if we want to save it, it should auto save. But if we click on the Tinkercad symbol, that should save it. So wait for that to save. Okay. Here we go. Now, one of the things I can do now here, if I click on this here, I can now go back into Tinkercad it. Um, and work on it further, but I'm going to press on download and I'm going to download this as an STL file. Now I'm downloading it as an STL file because we're using uh, FlashForge Finder printers. Um, it may be that you need to use the OBJ file. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on Show in Finder. I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to open this with If it'll actually just automatically open. No, it won't. Okay, so we'll do it the other way. Okay, let's go to flash print. Wait for it 
load up. File, we're going to load this in. So we're going to load in this STL file. Okay, it says to start with this not on the platform, so we're going to press OK, that will drop it on. Sometimes it says there's an error, particularly Tinkercad, it often seems to say this, but it's got repair options, that's fine. And you'll see now we've got a 3D model in here, and this is the bounding box, it's sticking out a bit. So I'm going to click on the model, I'm going to click on scale. I'm going to click on maximum, I'm going to reduce the maximum down a little bit so it's not quite at the edge of it. Seems to cope a bit better with printing like that. Again, you can see I'm moving around. Everything is more or less flat, but there's a couple of bits like this that aren't supported. And obviously a 3D printer can't print in midair. It's, it's not magical. So if we go to supports, we can click on auto supports. I don't always love auto supports because it tends to throw supports in everywhere. Okay, you'll see there. Okay, it's kind of gone a little bit mad there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and then do that one. Okay, let's have a look again. So there are different ways we can do this. One of the ways we can do this is instead of doing the auto support, so if we click on this, we can go to cut. I think it's floating. Okay, click on cut. Okay, and if we do, you can choose which plane it's going to be on. So you can choose the X axis or you can choose the Y axis, but we don't want either of those. We want the Z axis, we can choose that. And we don't want this very high up. We probably only want it up like a millimeter or something. Okay. Two millimeters. Yeah, okay. So it's just going to make sure we get a nice flat bottom on it. So I'm going to press start cut there. Okay. We don't want that piece, so we can delete that. I'm going to click on this one, click on move. I'm going to put that back on the platform. We're going to center it back onto the platform. And we should see when we look underneath now, we've got lots of blue section here, so that's all nicely adhered to the base. We can go back onto our supports and we can click on auto supports now. And it should only now build supports around the sections that are unsupported, which are that hand and that snorkel there okay if you disagree with them you can add them in or you can remove them okay but that one looks okay then we're going to go to print okay so i'm going to press back i'm going to save the supports to the file close that okay i'm going to go to print you can change the print settings here i'm not going to worry about this for now so just press okay i don't want to draft or a brim so i'm going to ignore those and i'm going to save this now, I can't demonstrate printing this straight away, but what I can show you is how the printer will do this. So what it's doing is it's slicing it down into a number of layers. And you'll see, as it does this, that it tells you how many layers that is. Let's wait for a second. This is quite big, by the way. I probably should have resized this smaller, but for the purpose of this demonstration, um, it will suffice, good. So this is going to take two hours and 44 minutes to print and it's going to use 12 meters of uh, plastic. Okay, there's 121 layers. So you can see what the finished version looks like here. Okay, but if we just move this around a little bit and then use the layers here, you can see what's going to happen. So if I take this right down to the base here, you start with a flat base and the supports and then as it comes up, it starts to build this hex. So um, it's going to pattern. Now that's about reinforcing it without wasting plastic. Okay. And then you can see the name starting to emerge. Okay. You should at some point as we come up start to see um, that pyramid because we actually recessed that slightly in. Okay. You can see there it's coming out now. This is exactly how it works on the printer. You just see these layers build up, okay? And then when I finish this, I could print this and I'd obviously eventually have to just break off the support bits that are um, not needed. But that's a very simple name tag, okay?